Hi there guys, nice to see you back again. Um, today's episode, we're gonna learn how paint is made. Making paint uh, actually comes down to dispersing dry raw materials into a liquid binder or a binder that has been made liquid for paint. Um, and this process of dispersing uh, is a two-step process actually. Before produ uh, production, of course, the recipes are ready developed by our chemist specialists in laboratory. And according to the recipes, we start by weighing uh, the dry raw materials exact to the gram. So at that stage, nothing much is happening but weighing the dry raw materials. Next step is uh, drawing off the binder, also exact to the gram. And after that, the dry raw materials are put into the liquid binder. And here the first step of dispersion takes place. Actually, the pigments and maybe some other dry raw materials, like colorless pigments or extenders, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they look like a very fine powder, but in reality they're not. In reality, and we have to think in microns, thousands of uh, millimeters, uh, in reality the smallest pigment particles are lumped together and during dispersion, the dispersing process, we have to separate those lumps of pigment particles into smaller and smaller and smaller lumps. And the smaller we take them apart, the higher the quality and the tinting strength of the paint. We start with mixing, we call pre-mixing, and already there, the pigment lumps are separated into smaller parts, but not fine enough, actually. After pre-mixing, the paint goes uh, to the triple roll mill and there the pigment lumps are even ground finer into smaller and smaller lumps. In this process we have to take care that we do not damage the pigment particles themselves, meaning the chemical composition of the pigment, because when you, we damage the chemical composition then we will have a change of hue. And that cannot be because within an existing assortment the painter has the guarantee that he always buys exactly the same color. Except for natural pigments that uh, we also still use, you know, like umbers, natural umber shenas. Uh, then uh, we depend actually on uh, where it is found in the world, you know, and then there might be a slight color difference. Most pigments nowadays, they come from uh, chemical industry, they're uh, made uh, chemically, and the color is always the same. Uh, depending on uh, the quality of the paint, and also on the hardness of the pigment, uh, a paint might have to go several times, up to maximum five times, through this triple roll mill. Um, for example, uh, Cobra paint, uh, the artist's quality is ground, maximum fineness, 35 microns. Now, if the distance between the rolls of the triple roll mill is immediately, immediately set to this fineness, then two things can happen. First of all, I might damage, we might damage those pigment particles, so we have a change of hue. And also what uh, might happen is that with very hard pigments we destroy the triple roll mill, the hard steel cylinders. And they're very expensive so we won't do that either. What do we do? First, the distance between the rolls is adjusted relatively wide. Paint goes over. Every roll is turning faster because the difference in speed, the pigment lumps are ground apart. And also because of the difference of speed, the paint is taken over from one cylinder to the other one and after the third roll, the paint is scraped off by a knife. If all the paint has passed, we bring the paint back to the beginning, we adjust the distance between the rolls a little bit finer, paint goes over again. And this process is repeated until the acquired fineness is there. 
Now, it's indicated in the recipe how many times a certain product should pass the triple roll mill. But after the last time indicated in the recipe, we have to check it. And uh, we check the finest on a so-called Heckman cage. Mr. Heckman invented it once, so that's why it's called that way. Um, and in this Heckman cage, uh, we bring in the paint, thinned with extra oil, and we create actually a paint layer that varies from zero till 100 microns, one tenth of a millimeter. If, for example, we measure the Cobra Artist, maximum 35 microns, if there are still lumps inside the paint, bigger than 35, then we can see on the side of 35, where the paint layer is thicker than 35, we still see the pigment lumps sticking their heads out of the paint layer. That should not be. On that side, the paint layer should be completely smooth. On the other side, lower than 35, it's okay if we see the pigment lumps sticking their heads out. So that's how we check the fineness of grinding. If everything is all right, the paint is filled in uh, plastic barrels, big buckets, covered up with plastic, we close the buckets and then every product will have a certain standing time. It goes up to about three weeks and that's for us to be sure that when we fill it off, later in the packaging, tubes, jars, whatever, that the stability of the paint is still good. So it's a quality check, actually. Once it's in the tube, it goes into the distribution center and later it comes out in the market to you guys. Now we know how paint is made. We also would like to know some more about properties of paint. That's for next time. And then we start using the paint. See you next time. Thank you.